This is Volvo. Volvo gets over 25 miles on a gallon of gas, just like the little economy cars, and runs away from other popular-priced compacts in every speed range. Volvos are built so well, they're driven an average of 11 years in Sweden, where there are no speed limits on the highways and over 70,000 miles of unpaved roads. Volvos also deliver 25 miles to the gallon. That won't bug you either. And if you're worried about keeping up with the Joneses, you can always buy a boat with the money you save. And you can drive a Volvo like you hate it. Cheaper than psychiatry. Celebration of freedom, signifying renewal as well as change. Rock and roll was playing on every transistor radio. The drive-in saw its second generation of the young and free. Automobiles were becoming a way of life. I love this car. I love this car. My 1967 Volvo 122S, also known as Amazon, named Arthur. I've put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this project. And is it perfect? No. Is it fun? Oh, yes. We've had a lot of adventures together, and I've taken this car with me all around the country. It's a blast to drive, it's a lot of fun, and boy is it unique. And now it's time for Arthur to find a new home as I move on to another state and another project. I'm David, and let me show you around and tell you why you should buy my Volvo. Here we are at last. You've been with Arthur and me over the years following the restoration and adventures we had across the country. We grew together, we're transformed together, and now as we move on to the next stages of our lives, here's a hero send-off for my 67. Year after year, for half a decade and with the jumpstart help of IPD, I turned this humble little red tomato into a rocket resto mod. Arthur started his life in Chicago, I've got the original dealer book for that, and he allegedly spent about a decade in Japan touring the country while his owners were at work. I made a full restoration series which was kicked off by IPD's build off back in 2013 as they celebrated 50 years of business, so I have documented every step of the restoration of this car for the last five years. With all the wonderful IPD performance suspension goodies, this car is a blast to drive. Over the years, Arthur has been my faithful companion as we've traveled every state west of the Rocky Mountains, meeting Volvo enthusiasts and owners every step of the way. Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming, and my favorite, California, where I made so many great friends, even took a trophy home, and had a wonderful time traveling for car shows. 
This was a ground up restoration, so that means that every single component of this car was removed, cleaned, replaced, or restored. And for me to recite the entire list would make this a very long video. I will mention some of the highlights. The engine and transmission are completely rebuilt. The interior is very custom. A lot of it was done by myself. And I went with a wood theme, very earth tone colors to match the green of the car. The carpet is a full custom job that I did myself. It's completely reversible and you could go and put a factory boring carpet back in if you wanted. The radio is not connected, but it is in place. I use an AEM wideband O2 sensor next to the vacuum gauge. I think those are the two most important tools for any performance carbureted car. Everything here on the dash works, including the dimmer for the lights. There's an electric choke on the carburetor, so I just put this nice little LED in place that used to serve as my overdrive indicator when I had that installed. It's currently on the M40 4-speed, and I've still taken that all around the country. I've put almost 20,000 miles on this rebuilt engine, and it has quite lived up to the reliability of the B18. During the recording of this video, two young ladies came to invite us to a car show this weekend at their church. The aluminum plates behind the grills that are housing my HID ballasts have been painted black. You cannot see them now the way the car is from the outside. The wheels are 17 by 8 Mustang bullet wheels from the early 2000s. The tires are brand new. The brake calipers have been rebuilt and the rotors were turned with new organic pads. They're a little dusty, but it's the best pad for the least amount of wear on a rotor that you don't want to have to find replacements for. Landon is my buddy who's been with me since the very beginning of this car's inception. He was there for the first start and the reassembly way back when we first had the IPD build off in 2013. There are a few dents and dings in some of the bright work here on the side of the car. The bumpers are unrestored. They do show a little bit of wear. This sticker once said Kennedy 1960, a time for greatness, but the reds always fade first on bumper stickers. You can tell where a hitch lived underneath the center of the bumper where it is dimpled up. You can't tell while you're standing. And here I've attached a kill switch for the battery where the fuel tank filler neck used to be. I've also got the original reflectors if you feel like putting them on, but I like the look without them. All the windows have been tinted to 35%, which is the legal limit in most states. And Swedish Motors is one of the premier Volvo repair places, especially for the classic models. They're located in Boulder, Colorado, and was one of the first places where I went to get parts for this car. All the lights, turn signals, and brakes do work on this car. I went through everything and made sure that all was in functioning order, especially since I'm traveling interstate. These HIDs are really great, very bright, and they do throw a lot of light around. People aren't happy with it, but when you're in a classic car, everyone's a little more forgiving. They're genuinely glass projector headlights, so there's no fading of plastic here. Underneath the bonnet is the life and soul of our Volvo. I kept the original engine that came with the car, the B18D, and I had it rebuilt. Brand new 30,000 over pistons and rings. The bottom end had new bearings as well. A brand new camshaft, new lifters, push rods and a full valve grind, so it was back to perfect, and I replaced all the hardware on it. We're now running with an alternator. This is a Miata alternator. We have a four to one header downpipe section with a full two and a quarter inch exhaust. Weber 3838, and I shaved off the battery tray as well as the heater valve, which made for a much cleaner engine bay, and a fully custom Willwood dual circuit power assisted brake setup. It's a fantastic job and it stops the car with very little pedal pressure required. The original ID tag next to the IPD sticker and of course brand new master and slave cylinders as well as aftermarket electronic ignition, fuel pressure regulator for my electric pump set to two and a half PSI for the Weber and an original radiator because nothing cools these cars as well as an original brass radiator does. For the first four years I had a clear bra on the hood to protect it from rock chips as I was traveling. I recently removed it and was happy to see that the paint underneath is still perfect. 
I use stickers very sparingly in this car, but I felt like this was a very appropriate place to put my Volvo Rescue hashtag. Inside we have these wonderfully comfortable plush S80 T6 black leather seats. The leather is not torn anywhere, there's a little bit of fading. There's one small spot where it looks like it wore, it's not quite torn on the side. And there's a little bit of fading here and there, so I have these $100 seat covers on there which are very stylish. On the rear, I removed the back seat, I still have it, it will come with the car, but I used it as a place to put my chests filled with goodies for travel, and the dog bed sat on top of those. It's currently with the custom carpet and foam. I have also a circuit breaker underneath the dashboard which is attached to the battery cable in line of the kill switch. Inside our trunk is a 15 gallon tank made by Tanks Inc and everything else has just been painted black with a truck bed liner type of paint. The battery sits here securely strapped down in a box with vents, and the tank has a pressure relief valve on the side with a check valve underneath. There will be a spare tire, but I took it out so you can see inside the butt cheek of the tire well. There's no rust on this car. Everything was restored and replaced as needed. The biggest spots of rust were really just the corners of the floor pan so only the front floor pans needed to be replaced. Inside above the back hat tray area, I've added a LED light strip that signals my turn signals as well as my brakes. Since I don't have the reflectors on the rear of the car, I've used this, which you cannot see outside through the tinted window, so it has a very clean look. It's a very non-intrusive wiring job into the brake lights, which can be reversed easily, and it provides the perfect amount of visibility at night. Please buy my Volvo so people can stop turning their heads to talk to me and I can have my privacy back. Buy my Volvo so that I can repair my drone that I crashed during the making of this video. Buy my Volvo so that I can finally pay off my student loans. Buy my Volvo so I can help Soren fix his constantly breaking down 240. Thank you for watching. Please look at the description for a full list of all the goodies on this car, as well as the link to buy my dear Arthur. He won't let you down as a faithful companion and will last longer than your marriage, which is hopefully the rest of your life.